This is CPM Calculus Chapter 3, Number 51. Evaluate each limit. If the limit does not exist, say so, but also state if y is approaching positive or negative infinity. Okay, so part A, we're asked to find the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right side. Okay, so we know if we plug in negative 3, so let's plug it in, negative 3 minus 3 over negative 3 plus 3. We get negative 6 over 0, right? And we know that this right here is undefined, right? So we cannot stop there. When we're looking at limits, undefined just means that we have to investigate it more. So how can we investigate this more? Well, there's a few ways we could do it. We could do it numerically, algebraically, or graphically, right? So let's go ahead and do this graphically by plugging it into our calculator. So let's go ahead and bring out our calculator and graph um, x minus 3 divided by x plus 3. And putting these in parentheses so we get the equation like the one we want it to be, right? Otherwise, it would be x minus 3 over x or something that we don't want it to be. Okay, <clears throat> so let's graph this. Okay, and we see here, here's our origin. We go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. There is um, an asymptote here, right? There's a vertical asymptote. And as we're approaching negative 3 from the right, our graph, this is the x, right? So if as x is approaching negative 3, our graph is going down, 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 down. As we're approaching um, negative 3 from the left, our graph is going up, 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 up. All right? So we know that as x is approaching 3 um, from the left and the right, they're different, right? But from the left, it's positive infinity. From the right, it's going to negative infinity. So what this is equal, right, is going to be from the right, it's approaching to negative infinity, right? So we can say that, but we know the idea of infinity does not exist, so it also does not exist, okay? So both of these go together when we say infinity um, for a limit because infinity does not exist it is just kind of an abstract idea, um, but the limit, it is approaching negative infinity, right? Y is going down, down, down forever. Okay, so let's go on to part B. Okay, again, B, we're looking at the limit as X approaches 2 of X plus 2 squared minus 2 over X. So let's first try and plug in 2. So we get 2 plus 2 squared minus 2 over 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, so we have 4 squared minus 2 over 4, oops, over 2. That's 16 minus 2 over 2, that's 14 over 2 is 7, okay? So when we plug in 2, we get 7, and that exists, that's a real number we, um, we see. So that is the limit as x approaches 2. All right, part C, limit as x approaches infinity of 2 plus 2 to the x over 2 minus 2 to the x. Okay, so we're looking at x getting really, really big, right? So we could plug in 1, 2, 3, 4. We could keep plugging in different numbers for x until we get to 1,000, 10,000, a million, a billion, a trillion, and so forth, because we want to see what happens to the function. Okay, we want to see the trend. Or we could try to plug this one into our calculator and see what is happening. So let's clear this away and let's plug in 2 plus 2 to the x power divided by 2 minus 2 to the x power. Okay, and then we push enter. We can see that that's exactly how it looks here. And let's graph it. Okay, so here, um, here's the graph. There's a vertical asymptote here, right? Um, so what's happening? Well, as x is going to the right, we're seeing that this curve 
Um, what's happening to it? Is it going up to zero or is it stopping at some point? Well, let's zoom out a little bit. So zoom, let's just zoom out. Okay, well, we see the line still there, so it's not overlapping with our axis. So, right, let's see. Let's just trace this and see what's happening. Or let's, yeah, let's trace it. So as we go, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, y, oh, y became negative 1. And it's still negative 1. And it's still negative 1. Okay, so right now that makes me think, looking at my calculator, that this is negative 1. Well, let's investigate this without the calculator, and let's look at the value as x gets really big. Well, as x gets really, really big, we no longer care about adding this 2, right? So this is the same as the limit as x goes to infinity. We don't care about the, the constant 2 because we're getting such a big number, it overrides that 2. We also don't care about this 2 in the denominator because this overrides that as well, right? So it's kind of negative 2 to the x in the denominator and 2 to the x in the numerator. Well, as x gets really, well, these now we can simplify, right? Limit as x approaches to infinity. And what's 2 to the x over negative 2 to the x? Well, that's 1 over negative 1. And that's equal to, well, now we don't have any more x's. That's just negative 1. Okay, well, this is the answer then. And we kind of backed it up um, algebraically as well. All right. So let's go into part D. Um, D is asking us to find the limit as x approaches pi from the right of pi. Okay. Well, this one, they say to be careful because let me just tell you right away that the answer is pi. And how do I know that? Well, let's graph y is equal to pi. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So where is pi? Well, we know pi is 1, 2, 3.14 here. Right? So y is equal to pi is this line right here. Right? This is just y is equal to pi. Right? And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 negative 1, and so on. This right here, 1, 2, 3.14, this right here is the value pi. So if we're approaching pi from the right, right, because as x is approaching pi, so here's our x and our y value, right, our x axis, our y axis. As x is approaching pi, well, our y value is still pi. Actually, our y value is pi no matter what. Okay, so x could be approaching anything and since we have a constant right this has no x term it's constant then it's equal to that constant it's pi all right this then we're done this ends cpm calculus chapter 3 number 51